Anaheim, California, a city of 350,000 people in sunny Southern California, home to Disneyland, the Anaheim Ducks, the Angels, fine dining and world-class entertainment. But what if we could take a time machine back into our history and find out what Anaheim was like before all of these things? At Museos Anaheim, a walk through local history, located in the historical Carnegie Library building, we can. Come along with me as we go back in time. Our first stop takes us all the way back to the age of dinosaurs, millions of years before the first modern humans arrived on the scene. Dinosaurs lived between 230 and about 65 million years ago, in a time called the Mesozoic Era. There are plenty of dinosaur fossils from this period in other parts of the United States, but not here. Why? Because during this time, most of California was underwater. Anaheim was part of the ocean during the age of dinosaurs. But how do we know this? Because while there aren't many dinosaur fossils found here, there are lots of fossil whale skeletons and other marine fossils in Orange County. Jump forward millions of years in time. We have the skull of a saber-toothed cat, or Smilodon, that walked the land right here until its extinction about 10,000 years ago. The saber-toothed cat which could weigh up to 600 pounds, wasn't a dinosaur at all. It was a mammal and the official state fossil of California. Two major groups of Native Americans inhabited the lush lands now known as Orange County, the Ahachiman or Juaneño, and the Tongva, or Gabrielino. The Ahachiman villages were governed by male and female clan chiefs. Both the women and the men wore grass skirts and animal skins and adorned themselves with elaborate jewelry made out of seashells and beads. Families lived in dome-shaped shelters made out of willow and tule. There was a hole in the middle of the ceiling for smoke to escape, which could be covered with animal hides when it rained. Although they hunted and fished, the indigenous people of this area depended more heavily on plentiful acorns and seeds for their diet. Acorns in their natural form contain high levels of toxins and tannic acid that must be removed in an elaborate multi-step process before eating. The Native Americans who lived in this area were known for their intricate woven baskets but were not known for making pottery. The pottery seen here was acquired through trade, as was the highly valued fire and water resistant soapstone found on Catalina. Soapstone could be used for cooking because the heat of cooking fires wouldn't cause it to break apart. In 1769, the first permanent European settlement on the Pacific coast was established by the Spaniards. The Spanish came to California both as ranchers and missionaries. Franciscan father Junipero Serra founded the first of 21 Spanish missions in California in 1769. Mission San Juan Capistrano was established in 1776, and this mission had an enormous effect on the indigenous people of Orange County. Initially, the spectacle, wealth, and abundant food of the missions attracted many Native Americans. However, the death rate of Native Americans at the missions was extremely high. During the mission period, the Native population went from an estimated 65,000 to 17,000, primarily due to hard labor and the introduction of European diseases to which the population had no immunity. In 1821, Mexico won its independence from Spain which made this area, called Alta California, a territory of Mexico. 
It was not until 1850 that California was granted to the United States under the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. In 1857, a group of 50 Germans incorporated as the Los Angeles Vineyard Society and hired Austrian George Hansen to find land in Southern California where they could grow grapes to make wine. Juan Pacifico Antiveros, a former soldier and major domo of Mission San Juan Capistrano, was granted the 35,000 acre Rancho San Juan Cajon de Santa Ana in 1877. Antiveros, whose daughter had married a German-born man, agreed to sell Hansen 1,165 acres of land for $2 per acre. Since the grazing land had been devastated by drought, he was rumored to have said that the land he sold couldn't support a single goat. Each of the 50 Germans paid $1,600 for a 20.4 acre vineyard lot and a small city lot. Within two years, the colony was laid out, irrigation ditches had been dug, and 400,000 mission cuttings had been planted. George Hansen's house, built in 1857, is still standing in Anaheim and is known as the Mother Colony House. With the exception of John Froehling and Theodore Reiser, the remaining 48 colonists had no winemaking or even farming experience. Their regular occupations included attorney, artist, musician, physician, shoemaker, and bookkeeper. In 1859, the settlers voted to call their new town Anaheim, a combination of the German word for home, Heim, and Anna for the Santa Ana River, which was named by the Spanish explorers. The winemakers were very successful for 25 years. In 1860, 2,000 gallons of wine were produced. By 1864, the total had risen to 300,000 gallons. In 1884, the 50 wineries were making over 1 million gallons a year. And then, it all came crashing to an end. A mysterious disease struck the grapevines just when Anaheim was recognized as California's leading wine-producing community. The mission vine stock they favored was highly susceptible to this disease. As an example of the scope of the blight, winemaker Benjamin Dreyfus' vineyard had produced 10 tons of grapes per acre. By 1885, it had dwindled to one single wagon load from the remaining 18 acres of grape vines. Although the cause of the mysterious blight was unknown for many years, it is now thought to have been caused by a bacterium. Originally called the Anaheim disease by early newspapers, it was renamed Pierce's disease in 1892. Fortunately, grapes were not the only crops being grown in the region now known as Orange County. Farmers here also grew grains, potatoes, sugar beets, tobacco, berries, walnuts, chili peppers, and Valencia oranges. Farming efforts shifted to the growing of oranges, which became emblematic of the region and of the promise of Southern California. The colorful images of oranges and sunshine helped fuel the migration west that has made California the most populous state in the nation.
Early Anaheim was culturally diverse, employing people of Native American, Hispanic, and Chinese ethnicities in the vineyards, wineries, and local businesses. The colonists also married into the surrounding Spanish and Mexican rancho families. People of Japanese descent settled here starting in the late 1890s, followed in the early 1900s by black Americans from the southern states. This was made from a woman's hair that was saved after brushing. Human hair jewelry and keepsakes were quite popular in the 19th century. They were sometimes created as a memorial to someone who had passed away, as in this elaborate wire and hair wreath created using a technique called gimp work. Here we have a collection of items that would have been found in the homes of some of Anaheim's early residents. This beautiful silk bodice from the early 1900s would have been worn with a matching skirt. It's decorated with crocheted lace, embroidery, and velvet trim. It was worn by an early Anaheim settler who owned one of the vineyard plots. Irons like these would have had to be heated over a fire or on the stove. These strange looking instruments are for curling hair and ribbons. Curling tongs, or crimpers, have been around since the 1680s. Note the gas hookup on the heating plate. The device at right is a fluting iron used to crimp strips of fabric into fine pleats for use as trim on dress clothing. Traditional purses were carried by women beginning in the 1880s. This beautiful evening bag is made with glass beads and lined with satin. This woman's dress from approximately 1895 is made of brown and black taffeta with a modified bustle skirt and is decorated with black glass and metal beads. By 1927, Anaheim's original downtown had been replaced with fashionable neoclassical revival style buildings. After the 1970s, the only structures left standing from this elegant era were the Carnegie Library and the Kramer Building on Center Street, and some of the last remaining architectural details of this bygone time are on display here. The Anaheim Fire Siren signaled volunteer firefighters to a local fire or community emergency. It also heralded the end of both World War I and World War II. But its most important use was on the morning of March 3, 1938, when the siren saved hundreds of lives by awakening sleeping residents as the Santa Ana River flooded the city. The flooding was so extensive that it was reported that you could travel from Fullerton all the way to the ocean at Huntington Beach by rowing a boat down any of the southbound boulevards. Anaheim's Fox Theater opened on October 27, 1921 to a standing room only crowd of 1,300 patrons. In the 1930s, the Fox became a premier movie theater, but by the end of the 1950s, audiences were more inclined to stay home and watch their televisions. The Fox was torn down in 1978 despite attempts to have it declared an historical monument. The Anaheim Fall Festival and Halloween Parade began on October 31, 1924, with downtown merchants creating secret window displays that were unveiled at the start of the parade. Baseball greats Babe Ruth and Walter Johnson served as grand marshals. 
1995, after a four-year hiatus, the event was revived and continues to draw thousands of spectators annually. Who can imagine Anaheim without Disneyland? In 1953, Walt Disney commissioned the Stanford Research Institute to find the perfect site for his amusement park, and their final report identified the Anaheim area as best fitting Disney's criteria, including a central location, accessibility, and inexpensive land. After his first attempt to purchase land was scotched by speculators who drove up the price, Disney finally bought a 160-acre site at Ball Road and Harbor Boulevard. Disneyland opened in 1955 after only one year and a day of construction. Sports have always been a part of Anaheim's history. The newly developed La Palma Park baseball field was used by Connie Mack and his Philadelphia Athletics for spring training from 1940 through 1942. In 1966, the California Angels played their first game against the San Francisco Giants at Anaheim Stadium. And in 2002, the Anaheim Angels won the World Series. From 1980 to 1995, the Los Angeles Rams played their home games in Anaheim Stadium, and in 1993, the Pond of Anaheim became the home of the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim hockey team. Early Anaheim was home to many war veterans of foreign and domestic wars, including Alexander Henry, who fought in the Crimean War, and Ezra Benedict Kellogg, who fought in the War of 1812. Both are buried in the Anaheim Cemetery, which is also the final resting place for 56 veterans of the American Civil War. In July 1887, 43 Anaheim residents formed the Anaheim Tyroliers applied for admission to the California National Guard and were officially designated as Company G in March of 1888. The Anaheim National Guard was called to active duty in 1898 at the advent of the Spanish-American War and mustered to help in San Francisco after the devastating earthquake of 1906. Anaheim soldiers fought in both World War I and World War II. When the draft was called for World War I, 350 Anaheim men reported for duty. During World War II, Anaheim formed the first Civil Defense Council of Orange County and began guarding the Southern California coast. People carried ration books for food, shoes, and gasoline, and other goods that were in short supply. Although World War II began on September 1, 1939, the United States did not enter into the war until after the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. In 1942, over 500 Anaheim citizens of Japanese descent were sent to the post and incarceration camp in Arizona for the duration of the war. The war ended on September 2, 1945, when Japan formally surrendered to the Allies. We'd like to thank you for traveling back in time with us, and we hope that learning about Anaheim's rich past makes you appreciate this unique city even more. <laughs>